Hello, Roxbury! <laughs> Other things may change us, but life begins and ends with the family. Anthony. Have you ever lost a loved one and didn't have a chance to say goodbye? There were 10 of us. My mom, Bernice, my dad, Sydney, and eight perfect children, <laughs> including two sets of twins. Cheryl, Carl, Marcus, Valerie and Barry, Tangi, Vera, and Vanessa. Six of the ten names I just spoke are now deceased. Four of us are thankful and grateful to be alive. My phenomenal mother, Carl, me, and Vanessa. I've learned that life is full of lessons and blessings and I learned how to accept the path of life after death. It was June 1974. I was 18 years old, looking forward to the summer and excited to spend time with family and friends. My parents were visiting relatives out of state, and my sisters were packing their bags and personal belongings because they were spending the weekend at Cheryl's home with her husband, Marshall, my niece, Carla, and my nephew, Stanley. Our house was filled with love loud conversations and laughter. My brothers missed the fun because they were not at home. We packed the car, embraced, and said, see you later. I didn't know that would be the last time I saw three of my sisters a lot. The loud ringing phone jolted me awake. It was early in the morning. My aunt said there was a family emergency and she needed to contact my parents. What was the family emergency, I wondered. I feared the unknown. When I called my mother, she calmly said, Valerie, there was a fire at Cheryl's home. Cheryl, Tangi, Vera, Kala, and Stanley died. I screamed, oh my God, no, no. I mean, this, this, this cannot be real. How could they be here one day and gone the next? When Vanessa came home, we hugged, kissed, and cried together. We were in shock. Vera, Vanessa's 
13 years old, identical twin, and Tangi was 14. The girls grew up together. And at the time, I had no idea what it was like to lose a twin. We were so glad to see my parents when they arrived home. Mom grounded us in our faith, and she assured us that we were going to be OK and that our family members were not in pain. The death of my family members permanently altered my life. There was no reasonable explanation, nor was there a reliable tool to assess just how deep the agonizing pain and grief was buried in my DNA. Years later, I learned that grief comes in stages. There are five that most people agree on. And looking back, I realized that I experienced them all. Most of us do. With mom's assurance, my faith, and love, I accepted reality. But I had to learn how to live in their absence. And I experienced the five stages of grief identified in the Kubler-Ross model. Number one is denial. Two is anger. Three is bargaining. Four is depression. And five is acceptance. May 2004. Let me take you back a minute. September 1993. My hero, my dad, was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of 62. And the doctors gave him two months to live. But he died two weeks later. And although it's been 31 years since my dad died, when I tried to recall the experience, I became very emotional, anxious, and sad. You see the grief? It never, like, really goes away. But we find ways to cope and to keep their memories alive. Dad dreamed of retiring and buying a home in North Carolina. But he passed away before that dream was realized. Years later, Mom bought a home in North Carolina, just like Dad wanted. My mom is 90 years old. And she told me to tell you. 
You're never too old to dream. <laughs> May 2004, my twin brother Barry recently had a stroke. I kissed his face and said, I love you over and over again. And excitedly, <laughs> I told him about the day that I had planned for the two of us right there in the hospital. See, Barry and I love to sing, but Barry was tone deaf. <laughs> I see some of y'all can relate, huh? <laughs> he sang loud <laughs> and he sang off key. But that day, I was carrying my portable CD player. Some of y'all remember those? <laughs> and our favorite songs. That day, I filled the room with music and love. I sung my heart out to Barry that day. A few days later, Barry died. The stroke and his death were totally unexpected. And I could not imagine, nor can I explain, the death of losing a twin. And for the first time, I sought professional help with a therapist. And she helped me accept the reality and deal with the unbearable pain. May was such an incredible month. But then December rolled along, December 2004. My brother Marcus, our James Brown impersonator, loved to dance. He survived multiple operations, and he lived longer than the doctors predicted. At a family gathering, our house was full of music, love, conversation, and laughter. Mom was even visiting from North Carolina. And my sister, Vanessa, cooked Marky's favorite meal. He dined sufficiently that day. The next day, Marcus died. And I thank God for the memory of yesterday and the day before. Every day, I am grateful to be alive. And I share my message with you in hopes of encouraging you to call your loved ones to say, I love you. At some point in our lives, we are all going to be faced with death. And we can't fully prepare for it, but we can connect with the people we love. Please, think of someone you know you need to call. Call them today, tomorrow, may be too late.
My life's experience inspired me to create the Fox Love and Healing Model. There are seven strategies to help you love yourself and to heal. Number one, love yourself. You are amazing. Number two, live your life. Do what makes you happy. Three, smile. They say it helps your looks, makes you feel good, and cost you nothing. <laughs> Four, kindness. Be kind to yourself and kind to others. Five, forgiveness. Now this is a tough one. Because first you have to forgive yourself in order to forgive others. Dream. Dreams do come true. And seven, laugh and have fun. It's healing. OK, speaking of having fun, let's try a fun exercise together. Are you ready? Yes. OK, first you want to open your arms wide. And hopefully you're not smacking anybody. <laughs> Then you can tell them I love you at the end. <laughs> you want to put your right hand on top of your left shoulder and your left hand on top of your right shoulder. Now this is where you give yourself a big hug. Now say, I love you. I didn't hear you. Can you say it again? It's official. You're members of the I Love Me Club, and anytime you need a hug or you need to heal, remember, I love you. <laughs>